Hi, so the problem that we'll be discussing today is from the recent November lunchtime 2021 and the problem name is strange minimization. So the difficulty level of this problem is easy medium and its prerequisites are number theory and some observation. Now let's read the problem statement. So the problem statement says that you are given an integer n. Find another integer x where x is greater than n such that the following conditions are satisfied. So let's see. So the first condition is that x is not a multiple of n. So this is very important. So x is not a multiple of n. And the second condition is that the value of GCD of n comma x minus LCM of n comma x. So the absolute value of this expression, it should be as small as possible. So basically, these are the two conditions given to us. And now we need to find such if uh, any such x e exists. And if there are multiple x, uh, we can print any of them. So let's just take a small example. Let's take say n is equal to 4. Okay, so let us try and find x for this. So now let us go one by one. So first we have x is equal to 5. So now let us see what is the value of this expression. So what is GCD of 4 and 5? It is 1. And what is LCM of 4 and 5? Uh, yeah, it is 20. So basically, the value of this expression is 19. Right. Now uh, let us take x is equal to 6. So what is GCD of n comma x? Uh, it is nothing but... Uh, let's... What is GCD of n comma x? Uh, it is 2. Okay. And what is LCM of 4 and 6? It is 12. So the value for x is equal to 6 is 10. Now let us see what is the value for x is equal to 7. So the value for x is equal to 7, it is GCD is 1 and LCM is 28. So now one thing is clear over here that once the value goes beyond a certain limit, it will go on increasing. Okay. So like there is no stopping it so basically uh, this uh, we can say uh, the every uh, like every uh, expression value uh, ahead of this will be greater than 10 since the therefore the answer for n is equal to 4 case it is x is equal to 6 now let us see why this answer was x is equal to 6 so we'll see that in the solution approach so we have here n is equal to 4 okay and now we did get its answer as x is equal to 6. So, so uh, let us try and uh, make factors of n. So, we can write n as 2 into 2. Now, what is the smallest increase that you can make in this such that there is no change in the, like, there is minimum change in the GCD? So you can just increase one of these factors by one. So let's say we increase this by one. So it becomes, uh, so this is our new, this is our number X and it becomes three into two. Okay. So now why did we do this? Because if you check the GCD of these two, so what is GCD? It is the common factors, right? So common factors is GCD. Okay, and what is LCM? LCM is uncommon factors, like the product of uncommon factors, uncommon factors product multiplied by the common factors. Okay, so this is uh, the LCM. So now if we check out GCD minus LCM, it is basically common factors. So, so it is 1 minus uncommon factor product. So what we have to do is we have to minimize this uncommon factors. So if we just change one of these, then the uncommon factor will just be this one. So over here, we can say that 2 is the common factor and the uncommon factor is 3. So the LCM is 2 into 3 is equal to 6. Now let us try the similar approach on say another number now here we will first only take the case of even numbers so let us say we consider n is equal to 10 
Now, what are the factors of 10? So, we can write n is equal to 2 into 5. Okay. Now, again, we have to find x. So, now let's just increase one of these. Now, here is again the question that which of these we should increase. So, it actually doesn't make sense to increase the larger number. We should always increase the smaller number because then the larger number will be the common factor, right? So, this, uh, this I hope this part is clear. So, here, since our n was 2 into 5, we should have our x as 3 into 5. So, if this is the case, then we have our GCD as 5, which is the larger number, and our LCM as nothing but 5 into 2 into 3. Correct. Which is, I think, yeah, 30. So, 5 minus 30. So, we have the two numbers 10 and 15 and 5 minus 30 is equal to 25. So, 25 is the smallest number that you can, uh, the smallest value of the LCM minus GCD expression that you can get. So, for even numbers, I think we have it pretty sorted it out for us. So, let us just note it down. So, for even numbers, what we have, we write n as say 2 into x. Now, keeping x same, we just increment n by 1. And we have x is equal to 2 into small x. Or let's just say this is not x, this is y. So, that there is no confusion. Sorry. This is x is equal to 3 into y. Right. We just incremented this 2 by 1. So, it became 3 into y. So, we can write the answer for even numbers as x is equal to so what is y over here it is nothing but n by 2 so the answer for uh, even numbers x is equal to 3 into what is y it is n by 2 so 3 into n by 2 so for even numbers this is the value for x now let us check out the value of x for odd numbers so for the case of odd numbers what we can do so here uh, basically what we did for even numbers we wrote n as a, a like multiple of its of two factors so basically here 2 is the smallest factor so what we did essentially was the smallest factor into the largest factor so this is what we wrote n as and that gave us the answer so we can do the same thing for odd numbers that we can write n is equal to factor 1 into factor 2 where factor 1 is the smallest uh, smallest uh, prime factor uh, sorry smallest odd factor of uh, n right and f2 is the uh, f2 is the largest odd factor because both of them have to be odd since n is odd right so let us consider f1 as the smallest odd factor now essentially this factor will also be a prime number so then what will be x now x will be nothing but the smallest odd factor so again the same idea will apply here so x will be nothing but f1 plus 1 into f2 right so we are just incrementing the smallest odd factor by 1 and this gives us directly our answer so here our gcd is equal to f2 and our lcm is equal to f2 into f1 into f1 plus 1 so, this is our LCM and uh, as you will see, the product, uh, the difference of these two will be minimum. Now, let us uh, try to take an example. So, there is a one more corner case that we can discuss. So, first an example. So, we have n is equal to 21. Now, uh, how can we write 21 as? We can write it 3 into 7. So, now since 7 is the greater factor, we will keep 7 as it is and we will increment 3 by 1. So, then we have x is equal to 4 into 7. Okay. Now, uh, let us calculate uh, the GCD. So, the GCD is nothing but 7. And what is the LCM? So, LCM is equal to 7 into 3 into 4. So, it is nothing but I guess uh, 12 7 is 84. So, GCD minus LCM is 77. Okay. Now, uh, as you see, uh, for 21, the answer will be 77 since it is the minimum value. Now, there is one case to be considered of. What if n is equal to 23? 
so in case of n is equal to 23 you cannot do it like this so you cannot write it as 1 into 23 because 1 is not a prime factor right because 23 itself a prime number right so here in this case what you have to do is since 23 is a prime number there is no other option than to just uh, have x is equal to 24 because uh, as we know that prime factors uh, so GCD of say prime number with any other number x is always 1 and LCM of prime, prime number with any other number x is always p into x. So here it is better, of, better that we have x as the smallest possible number. Now we have been given that x should be greater than n right. Now what is the smallest possible value of x that is greater than n? Obviously, it is just n plus 1. So, here in case of prime numbers, x should be equal to n plus 1. And that's it. That's our solution. So, uh, what, what was our, let us just summarize our solution once. So, we have for n is equal to 23, our x will be equal to 24. Okay, because 23 is a prime number. So, to summarize our solution, we have for for even numbers, we have x is equal to 3n by 2. Okay. For odd numbers, which are not prime. Okay. For odd numbers, which are not prime, we, uh, we were able to calculate the smallest prime factor. So, let us consider that smallest prime factor as f1 and the remaining factor as f2. Okay. And we have f1 plus f2 is equal to n. So, again here x was equal to f1 plus 1 into f2. Cool. So, this is the answer for odd where it is not a prime number. Now, the third case where it is odd and prime. So, for this case, again uh, simply we have x is equal to n plus 1. So, yeah, this is the solution. And... Now let us directly proceed to the C++ implementation. So starting off with the implementation, first uh, we take input T, number of test cases, then we iterate over each of the test cases, then we take input N, which is our given number. Now first we check the even number case, if N mod 2 equal to equal to 0, then we just output 3N by 2. So this is our answer for even numbers. Now let's go to odd numbers. So here I have initialized this variable fc is equal to 0. So in fc I will be storing the uh, smallest factor of, uh, of the number n. So for storing the smallest factor what we do we simply iterate from i is equal to 3 i less than equal to square root of n i plus equal to 2. So the square root of n is simply uh, because uh, obviously the smallest factor of n will not be greater than square root of n. Right. So we have this loop and here we just check if n mod i equal to equal to 0, we uh, just assign the value that fc is equal to n by i. Now fc is the other number, right? So i is the smallest factor and fc is basically f2 over here. So we can say that uh, as we saw in our example that we wrote n as f1 into f2 right so here basically i is our f1 which is smallest factor and fc is our f2 which is the larger factor so fc is the larger factor now we what we do we just check if fc is not equal to 0 so why are we doing this so now uh, think if fc is equal to 0 that means this condition was never true right if this condition was never true, that means none of these numbers actually divide n. That means n is a prime number. So if fc not equal to 0, that is the case where the number is an odd number but not a prime number. So here we saw what our answer was. It was just simply fc into i plus 1. So what we saw in the solution approach, it was f1 plus 1 into f2. Okay. Now, Else, uh, when n is uh, n is an odd and a prime number, we just saw the answer is nothing but n plus 1. So, this is our answer and yeah, we will be printing the answer on a new line. So, this is the implementation. I hope you understood it. Uh, 
it is maybe a bit uh, tricky to observe this but uh, i think uh, with experience you can so yeah let me know if you have any doubts thank you